Super Smash Brothers was released in 2001 and against all odds is still an incredibly popular eSport. Melee is extremely technical, fast-paced entertainment and is somehow a game that was so perfectly accidentally made that new techniques are still being discovered and implemented by top players currently. Opsa did it! Opsa did it! The first time in history Opsa wins a Super Major, the hardest tournament we've ever seen in 22 years! But I wanted to see how good I could get at Super Smash Bros. Melee in just one week. Are you getting execution tested? Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Before entering a tournament to test my skills. Okay, I should be able to beat a level 9, but let's just, let's just make sure. Oh god. Boom! Okay, wait, I'm actually a lot worse than I thought. Yo, this fox is so bad. Okay, that was good, that was good. Oh, he's taunting! You wanna taunt last? Okay! I'll make you regret your decisions, boy. Get out of here! I had an okay baseline skill level from all my years of playing Smash Bros Wii U and Ultimate. So we immediately went online to test out a bunch of characters to see which one I was best with. And we all decided that Marth was my best character. Also, by the way, if, if you want to join in live, then check out my Twitch. It's down in the description. Day two, I thought it would be fun to already enter the Australian Weekly Melee Tournament. Then I could enter it again after a week to see how much I had improved. And if you like good tournament level melee gameplay, I am so sorry for what your eyes are about to see. I was trying my hardest, but it was so sloppy. Playing melee when you're not used to it feels like you're walking on stilts that are in mud. Now, miraculously, I managed to win my first round. I should say that just like my Street Fighter video, this was a tournament where you could not enter if you were one of the top players in Australia. So then I was thinking, you know what? This might not be too bad. I'm pretty good at this. And my next opponent was a Captain Falcon player called Akira. And they ate me up for breakfast. I actually, I wasn't even deservingly to be their breakfast. I, they ate me for an entree. My next match also did not go too well, and so just like that, I was out of the tournament with one win and two losses. I did not want to make the same mistake I did in the Fortnite video, where I played too much before actually practicing my technical skill. For me to stay motivated to actually practice instead of the fun of just simply playing, I firstly followed Ken's 2 hour and 30 minute math tutorial he has on YouTube. For those who don't know, Ken was the original king of Smash Bros Melee, being the number one player from 2003 to 2007, and he also played math. Throughout this journey, I also watched the Melee documentary. This is the thing that got me into competitive Smash Bros in the first place. Just immersing myself in Melee videos, tutorials, podcasts really kept my excitement and motivation to practice high and allowed me to stay focused on improving. As a human, <laughs> yes, hello, I am a fellow human. We are hardwired to get excited about what makes our community excited. So for example, in Australia, I'm just more likely to like things like cricket and Australian football, not because I logically think it's better than something like baseball, but just because I'm surrounded by it. 
And so I surrounded myself with melee videos and melee playing people like my friend Nathan who came over and gave me some tips while we played against each other. Which was much more helpful but also much more exciting than just playing melee on my lonesome. I continued this trend to stay motivated and then I received this message from Spud. Yo, Spud is... I'm sorry, this guy no. is actually oh fucking my. nuts. And uh, if you don't know Spud... Oh it's my god, he found him! Oh what? He is very good at melee. Oh, what shield a hope. great shield hope. And he's keeping it going. Whoa! <laughs> in fact, he was the best at melee in Australia before he retired. And then Prof said oh, no. he can't utilize crab castles anymore. Spud to oh, oh, Spud! Oh, Spud! The BAM 11 champion. Even internationals can't stand in this guy's way. Is that the poop it one? <laughs> Hello, can you hear me as well? Yeah, I can. Wait, I think I'm connecting? Um, oh, it's not yeah. working. Mine says connecting now. Does yours say connecting? It keeps going through. This is the first time this has ever happened. The only thing I can think of is <laughs> using a VPN and maybe that will just make it work. <laughs> Do you have one? <laughs> yeah. I started again. I'm using a VPN now. I don't know if it'll work. If it does, that's crazy, but... <laughs> oh! Surfshark VPN! Surfshark VPN is the best VPN service ever. A VPN allows you to browse the internet in peace knowing that all of your information is completely secure. Like even your internet provider will not be able to see what you're up to. Surfshark VPN has the added benefit of browsing the internet from whichever country you'd like. Oh man, this video is blocked in my country. Well now I'm in France. Since I live in Australia and our Netflix is pretty trash, I often use Surfshark VPN to connect to the American Netflix. With just one click of a button, now I have access to the American Netflix, which includes shows like The Walking Dead. I also do this to access Japan's Netflix, which as you can imagine has many more animes than any other country. Surfshark VPN is also the only VPN service that allows unlimited simultaneous connections, meaning you can connect with your phone, computer, and even your Xbox all at the same time. So so if you want completely private freedom online, then head on down to the description and use promo code POPAT1 for an incredible 83% discount with three free extra months. This is only like $2 a month and there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk. You're honestly just a bit silly if you don't go and check out Surfshark VPN. I made sure to ask a bunch of questions on things I was struggling with, which was a lot of things that Spud was super cool about helping. And you know, of course, I'm a quick learner, so after this advice, you know, me and him, we had some back and forth close matches. Oh. Oh. Oh, dude, that's funny. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Nah, he is a god. That is... He beat my ass, man. <laughs> Playing with Spud definitely amplified the importance of being technically good at the game. In Smash Bros Ultimate, since it's not as technically difficult of a game, players can often have matches where they defeat people who are way better than them. Only 46, 56, <laughs> But in Melee, this pretty much never happens because you just can't keep up. Now, day six, I actually barely got to play, unfortunately, because we were recording underdogs videos like all day. And so it quickly became tournament day. In the morning, I made sure to practice my technical skill as much as possible. But I also didn't want to overly focus on the game slash tournament, throwing away the rest of my life like I've mistakenly admittedly done in a few previous videos. So I made sure to still exercise and go about my day like it was any other. I was feeling mentally fantastic, but playing online just a couple hours before the tournament was a little bit demoralizing because I realized that my technical skill just still was not quite there. How do I deal with the movement, man? Oh, 
stage. Bro, I'm so bad. That was cool. Wait, what do I do there? Who the hell is the Tonester, man? Who the hell is the Tonester, man? This person is top three in Australia, is that true? Turns out it was true, and uh, they were kind enough to jump in a call with me and give me some tips. Well, I think you could, you could like grab ledge and then like jump from oh, ledge in there. Of course. You can also do um, oh, that up reverse up B there. Yeah. 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 These tips from the Tone Star were absolutely amazing, but there was only so much I could do and implement because at this point it was one hour until the tournament started. Okay, I know that apparently your brain makes connections when you're asleep, so I'm going to try have a quick nap. Does that work? Maybe I should Google it. A few moments later. I don't know. I couldn't find anything, but I'm just going to have a quick nap and hopefully that resets my brain. And I'll just try and think about these uh, these new habits. Alright. That was good. Tournament starts in uh, 30 minutes, so let's warm up. My first opponent was Key, who is a Captain Falcon player. Now, I was playing decent, but they were so fast that I would throw an attack and they would move out the way and fly straight back in and punish me for it over and over. My worries of being not technically fast enough were coming true, but my mentality was super strong and I was able to stay really calm and survive for so long. Game two, I had to accept that I was not going to technically get any better and had to focus on finding moments where I could hit him as slow and silly as it may have looked compared to this absolute speed demon. It was really basic, but it, it worked. But unfortunately, I could not keep up, and so I dropped down into the loser's bracket. Now, this was actually quite scary, because if I lose now, then... I literally did worse than I did at the last tournament where I at least won one set. Just like enjoying myself was the best way to stay motivated to practice, the only way I was going to perform well was not to focus on the potential of losing or even winning, but just to enjoy playing the game. Immediately, I got my first ever four stock. So then they switched to Captain Falcon, the character I had lost to before. I tried my best not to attack in risky ways like I had mistakenly done earlier on in the tournament. My next opponent was a Falco player. Now, Falco is a notoriously annoying character for beginners because of his laser gun. Every time you get hit by it, it stuns you and freezes up your movement. So if you're already bad at moving, which I was, it's just infuriating. It completely locks you up. So I try my best to simply just jump high over the lasers and completely avoid them. It's not the most optimal way to deal with them, but with my terrible movement, it was what was going to work best for me.
Now at this point, I've won two sets and I am on a roll and I am feeling extremely confident. But my next opponent was noticeably better than my last two. But I was still playing solid. He made a crazy comeback and won game one, but I knew if I buckled down and got serious, I could win this whole set. But I lost. I was out of the tournament already and barely did better than I did at the last tournament. I came 17th out of the 37 entrants. I think I got too caught up in the moment and I seem to do this thing in these videos where I'm just focused on what I'm doing and how it's going to look in the YouTube video rather than just playing for the moment. Like for my set versus the math, I literally wrote down in a Google Doc before the match so that after I beat him, I would write down my thoughts on like how I beat him so it would make for a better video. Now, of course, all respect to my opponent because that's part of winning. He beat me, he had better focus. And I think my lack of focus came through in the gameplay because I was getting hit by simple combos like a throw into forward smash that are easy to escape if you just hold the stick in the other direction. But my focus and not just giving myself enough time to complete this challenge, I think is what really limited me. And I just don't want it to end it like this, so I'm not giving up on Melee yet. This is going to be part one. I loved Melee so much, and because I immersed myself so much in the scene and the community, I am still extremely motivated to bounce back and try my hardest to do better at one of these tournaments. Oh, also, we got a new puppy called Bonnie, um, so maybe I'll make a video on training her. She is asleep right now. I don't know how she sleeps so much. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of me training my dog. I don't know if that's weird. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See ya!